Hey everyone, we've been cruising on the Norwegian Epic for the last week, and in this video, I'm going to show you the complimentary or included dining that we had throughout our entire cruise. If you've never cruised before, or are just wondering what the included dining options are like on the Norwegian Epic, in this video, I'll be sharing the meals we had that are included in a basic cruise fare. So warning, this video may make you hungry. If you're new to my channel, I've been sharing our full Norwegian epic experience on board and on shore, so check out my previous videos linked in the description below. Now let's jump into the food, starting with our included breakfasts. I'll begin by sharing the Garden Cafe, which is the main buffet, and the Great Outdoors, which is right outside the main buffet, located on deck 15. There are plenty of options here, including cereals, deli meats, cheese, sliced fruit, bacon, different styles of cooked eggs, baked beans, pancakes, waffles, pastries, bread, biscuits and gravy, potatoes, vegetables, omelet stations, hash browns, breakfast sausages, and even a salad station. There really is something for everyone here. But if you prefer to sit down at breakfast or want a later breakfast, you can head to Ocean's Bar and Grill, located on deck six. This is open 24 seven and they serve breakfast from early in the morning until about 11 or 11.30 a.m. You order off a small menu, so the options are more limited, but they had a selection ranging from a full American or English breakfast to oatmeal and fruit salad. We especially liked the quick service and that they left a carafe of coffee on the table. I tried the fruit salad and also got the English breakfast, which was so big I had to share with Alan. And Alan ordered the breakfast sandwich and potatoes and everything was delicious. Taste Dining Room is one of the main dining rooms located on deck five. And here you can dine for breakfast until about 9.30 a.m. So if you're an earlier riser, this may be a good option for you. The menu has daily features and there are also some standard breakfast entrees available. The atmosphere is quite nice and they also bring you a carafe of coffee if you want it and they leave it at your table, which is always appreciated by us. I ordered a fruit salad and got the eggs benedict. Alan went for another breakfast sandwich, but this one came on a pretzel bun. Everything came out hot and tasted very good. Now on to lunch. Starting back in the Garden Cafe and Great Outdoors buffet areas, there were lots of great options to choose from. There was a dessert section with different cakes and cookies, an ice cream counter, hamburgers, hot dogs, grilled chicken, taco meat, chicken fingers, french fries, pizza, pasta, sliders, a full Indian food station, and a salad bar. Spice H2O, located at the back of the ship on deck 15 and 16, had a small buffet with standard grill items like hamburgers, hot dogs, salad, and fruit. But we actually never ate there. I just wanted to let you know that it's an included option. Back at Ocean's, the lunch and dinner menu are the same, and the options include salads, hot dogs, burgers, fries, wings, nachos, and more. Plus, they had a few dessert items too. We came a few times for lunch throughout the week and tried the Cobb salad, Caesar salad, hot dog and fries, hamburger and fries, nachos, spinach dip, sliders, wings, and even the pretzel bites. Everything came out at the right temperature and tasted great. And I liked the portion sizes because they weren't too huge. No complaints here. If you want to try the main dining room for lunch, you can head to Taste. I don't recall which days it was open or if it was every day, but we ate here once. They had appetizers, entrees, and desserts, so it's definitely a bigger lunch experience. I got the Asian meatball sliders and Alan got the corn chowder to start. I tried both and can confirm they were delicious. For our mains, I got the chicken parm and Alan went with the BLT sandwich. 
I couldn't finish my meal and we didn't even get dessert because the portions were quite large. But if you wanted dessert, it was an option. Now on to the dinner options. I'll start in the Manhattan room this time, which is the other main dining room open for dinner. We ate here for dinner the first few nights and enjoyed it because they had live music and even a dance floor. The menus change daily and they're the same options available in the Taste main dining room. We tried the cheese ravioli in a lobster cream sauce, Caesar salad, pear and gorgonzola salad, and the white cheddar and potato soup for appetizers. Everything was tasty, but I loved that pear and gorgonzola salad. For our mains, I had the herb crusted roast chicken and Alan got the vegetable burrito. I like the chicken better personally. The next night, Alan got the New York strip steak with fries and I got the bang bang chicken and shrimp and it was so delicious. For dessert the first night, we shared the apple pie and ice cream. Then the next night, I got the bananas foster and Alan went with the brownies more. 10 out of 10 on the bananas foster. We ate more of our dinners in the taste dining room and actually enjoyed the atmosphere there a bit more. For appetizers here, we had the cheesy mashed potato croquettes, skillet cornbread, which was a big hit with Alan, pot stickers, cheddar and roasted corn chowder, and I also got the seared Atlantic scallops and Alan got a beef slider with Swiss barley soup. For our mains on the first night there, I got the chicken cordon bleu and Alan went with a three cheese baked CD. On the second night, I got the bratwurst and wow, the portion size was massive. I barely ate half of it. Alan got the Parmesan crusted turkey, which was a much more reasonable portion size, but everything was very tasty. And by this point in the week, we were not eating dessert. We managed to get into Shanghai's Chinese restaurant. They don't take reservations here, so you just have to get there early and wait in line. The menu here is the same every day. We also got the hot stickers and the spring rolls, and both of those are fantastic. And I'm just waiting for my calamari, which is also an appetizer on the menu, and I'm sure it's gonna be pretty good based on everything else we've gotten so far. And we decided to skip dessert so that we can get more appetizers, because that's what we prefer. For mains, I got the Peking style chicken noodles and Alan got the Kung Pao chicken dish. So Alan's dinner portion was a little bit small. He decided to order another soup. He got the corn chowder soup and then he even got a dessert. So if you are expecting bigger portions when you're ordering the main dishes, they do come out kind of small. So make sure you order appropriately, but even when we added extra orders on, our waiter was super nice about it and just went and got them for us. So it was a pretty great dining experience. I might even say it's my favorite dining experience of the whole. Everything here was fantastic. Definitely wait in line for this if you're on the Epic. And now for the Garden Cafe. There are various stations like a bread station, salad bar, and pre-made salad options. They also had a full Indian food section, they had deli meat and cheeses, and antipasto items as well. There were also various pizzas, pasta, and on this particular night, there were lots of grilled options like potatoes, vegetables, corn on the cob, shrimp, chicken, and roast beef. Plus, they even had a soup station. For desserts, there were plenty of options, including a crepe station where you could have a custom crepe made, and they also had the ice cream counter open, 
loaf cakes and fruit, and a whole wall of pre-plated cakes and jellos. Throughout the week, they also included water, flavored water, iced tea and juice from the drink dispenser, and coffee and tea. I hope this video can be helpful for you so that you know what's included when you're cruising with Norwegian. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Coming up, I'll be sharing our overall thoughts of our experience on the Norwegian Epic, including our likes and dislikes, so stay tuned for that.